Hey, what's good, peeps? Um, been a couple weeks since we uh, we were able to dive in together. Been doing some, um, I guess, a lot of off-the-camera teaching with our, our Zoom option with uh, our teenagers and our young adults, but wanted to come today uh, just to share a brief word. Um, won't be before you long. Um, just talking about God the Father, uh, and I was thinking about that on uh, this week. Uh, so we'll jump right into it. Um, I do know that one of our, our teachers uh, for this particular week uh, did have a a sort of a health issue. Um, nevertheless, uh, she's doing okay. Uh, so just in case... Um, that was a that was a void in the word as far as her lesson for this particular week. Uh, I did want to still uh, bring that age group for our middle school, intermediate, um, even our teenagers that this applies to um, just to be able to give them uh, a word for the week. Uh, thinking about God being uh, our father, God is an infinite, all powerful, all knowing perfect spirit who has always existed as father son and holy spirit he's he's three in one so let's let's talk about one of the what i like to call the basics of our faith if you will that's the godhead the god uh, that we worship we believe as christians that god exists at the same time always has and always will as father son and holy spirit so we're going to work through what it means for God to uh, be our father. And there's a story in the Old Testament, in the Bible, in Genesis chapter 50. You can grab your Bibles uh, either now or once I'm finished just to kind of read along where you see this story about a man named Joseph. You guys have heard of Joseph, right? Joseph had a hard life. There was a lot of jealousy between Joseph and his brothers. See, he had 11 brothers, 11 brothers. Lord, pray for Joseph's mom. But Joseph had 11 brothers. Um, and his dad favored him over all of his 11 brothers. He was he was the favorite. And his brothers, they they didn't like him. They couldn't they couldn't stand him. They they hated him. So they said, "You know what? We're going to come up with a plan. We're going to we're going to sell LeBro into slavery." And this is what we're going to do. We're going to tell daddy that an animal killed him. And guess what? They did. They sold their own blood, their own brother, into slavery. And some of us know what it's like to be sold out by our own friends or even family. Maybe not sold into slavery, but you may have been thrown under the bus. You may have been snitched on. You may have been talked about. You may have been um, um, betrayed are shown of a lack of loyalty. So this is what they did. They sold their own brother into slavery. So we know what it's like to be thrown under the bus, but they literally sold him into slavery. That's a that's a that's a whole nother conversation. And he went into a whole nother country that wasn't even his. And I'm sure being disconnected from his family, being disconnected from his family, being disconnected from his friends, he had to be thinking, God, if you're real, where are you? I need you. But guess what? God was still with him. He continued with his new life in Egypt. He had a great job. He worked for a man named Potiphar. Everybody say Potiphar if you're at home. Potiphar, Potiphar, Potiphar. And then this is what happens. Potiphar's wife had a little thing for Joseph. Ask your parents about that. We always talk about sexual harassment and, you know, uh, uh, men sexually harassing women. But here's something that Potiphar's wife actually did. All right. So she threw herself onto him, tried to have sex with him. And Joseph rejected her. He didn't want to do that because he respected his employer. So guess what she did? She said he tried to rape me. Lied on Joseph. And Joseph caught a case, a case where he was innocent, but he was proven guilty, according to his employer, Potiphar. And guess what happened? He got thrown into prison. He had to do some time. So imagine this now. Joseph's family rejected him. His employer didn't believe him. 
He was lied on and now he's sitting in jail and I'm sure he's thinking, God, where are you? But the story goes on. You see, he worked his way up. God gave him a gift to interpret dreams. He interpreted a couple of dreams of a couple of different cellmates. And guess what? One of them was put to death and the other one got a job working for Pharaoh, who was like the top dog in all of Egypt at this particular time. But here's what happened. Before he left his cell, he turned back and told Joseph, yo, I ain't going to forget about you, bro. I'm going to tell the people on the outside all about you. And guess what? He forgot about him. <laughs> left jail, got out, and forgot about him. For two years, Joseph sat in that cell and had to be thinking, man, I was forgotten by, by the dude who said he wouldn't forget me. I caught a rape charge. And I was innocent and my friends and family, they are nowhere in my life after all these years. God, where are you? But the story still doesn't stop there. You see, what happened is this, that God remember Joseph, that Pharaoh had a troubling dream. And God gave a gift to Joseph and Joseph used it for the glory of God. And Joseph interpreted it, Joseph's, interpreted it, Joseph's dream or Pharaoh's dream. Pharaoh said, I'm making one of you of my one of you my homies. And I'm gonna allow you, Joseph, to be my number three in Egypt, because the dream said that there was gonna come a time where there will be no food, there'll be no rain, and everyone will come to Egypt to look for food. And guess who came to look for food? Joseph's family. Them boys that sold him into slavery, his own brothers, came. Looking for food. Now, rather than getting back at them, he forgave them. And in Genesis chapter 50, verse 20, he says this. What you meant for evil, God meant it for my good. So even in our life, when we don't know what it's like to have a father. No matter what it's like in your life, God is your father. And he cares for you. And he's there for you every step of the way. Every time you call out to him and says, where are you? God has been there to show you that he loves you and he wants to engage with you. Romans 8.28 says that he works all things together for the good of them, for those who love him and who are called according to his purpose. So God is working all those things out for our good and for his glory. God is our father and he will never abandon us. Take a look again at this story in Genesis chapter 50. And you can bank and believe that God is our father and he'll never leave us. We'll see you guys next time.